My name is uh, Josh Yamada. I'm a radiation oncologist at, uh, on staff at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York City. There's no question that the field has really gone from just an idea to a uh, reality over the past uh, 15 years is, is how long we've been doing radiosurgery in our institution. Uh, and I think really in the past five to ten years has become an important and integral part of most practices in the United States and throughout the world. Uh, a lot of things have been uh, necessary to make that happen. Uh, I think one of them has been improvements in imaging technology itself. Uh, and uh, for example, image guided techniques and uh, the marriage of image guided technology with uh, highly conformal uh, radiation treatment planning such as uh, intensity modulated radiation or now volumetric arc uh, treatment techniques have really allowed us to give extremely high doses of radiation. Radiation that is strong enough to actually ablate tumors and do that within millimeters of very dose sensitive structures such as the spinal cord and the esophagus and to do that very safely I think has really been the, one of the main key developments in uh, having spine radiosurgery come forward as a, uh, a discipline that really adds to the care of patients. First of all, I would say, you know, you have to do only what you're comfortable doing. And uh, there are a number of ways that you can do that. Uh, one of them is to enroll patients on a clinical trial. Another way is to start with hypofractionation using lower doses per fraction. Uh, but uh, knowing that the ultimate goal, uh, I would suggest, is to go to high dose single fraction radiosurgery. It appears that uh, for the most durable treatment outcomes, high dose, single fraction radiosurgery provides the, uh, the highest likelihood of local control. Hypofractionating either that's one, uh, going from one to two fractions or going to three fractions or more, uh, from the available data uh, suggests that it's not as durable as high dose single session radiosurgery. I don't feel the need to continue to uh, escalate their program to a single fraction high dose paradigm. I would suggest that you don't stop because in order to give your patients the best outcomes uh, from our, the institutional experience that uh, we've published suggests that uh, a very high dose single fraction radiosurgery really is the way to uh, provide the best tumor control outcomes for your patient and that uh, as you build on your experience, let's say going from uh, three to one fraction, for example, which, is, uh, which happened at our center, we went from five fractions to three fractions to one fraction, uh, that we were very confident in our technical capabilities to deliver the radiation as planned, to trust in uh, the technology to, that you will be able to deliver what's planned inside of a computer very accurately inside of a living, breathing patient. And if you feel comfortable in doing that uh, with three fractions, I think you should feel comfortable in doing that in a single fraction. So anything you can do to reduce the errors associated with patient motion are very helpful. At our institution, we will not treat patients without some kind of in fraction motion management. Uh, my particular uh, favorite is that uh, we have a LINAC that's equipped with exact track and we f I find that very helpful uh, and reassuring uh, to know that we can uh, deliver the radiation exactly to the location planned. And patients themselves uh, are, are very reassured to know that we're watching them very closely because as for example, as part of the consent process, I have to tell them what the potential complications of treatment can be, including spinal cord injury or esophageal injury. And so they're actually quite reassured to know that we have that kind of technology and that we're watching them very closely 
uh, and uh, that if there is some kind of uh, movement that might be clinically significant, that we're aware of it. And so I think uh, that kind of technology of uh, monitoring uh, the spine during the delivery of radiation helps the radiation oncologist as well as the patient sleep better at night.